the fourth ventricle, ventriculus cortis. The fourth ventricle, or cavity of the hindbrain, is situated in front of the cerebellum and behind the pons and upper half of the medulla oblongata. Developmentally considered, the fourth ventricle consists of three parts, a superior belonging to the isthmus rhombencephali, an intermediate to the metencephalon, and an inferior to the myelencephalon. It is lined by ciliated epithelium and is continuous below with the central canal of the medulla oblongata. Above, it communicates by means of a passage termed a cerebral aqueduct with the cavity of the third ventricle. It presents four angles and possesses a roof or dorsal wall, a floor or ventral wall, and lateral boundary. Angles. The superior angle is on a level with the upper border of the pons and is continuous with the lower end of the cerebral aqueduct. The inferior angle is on a level with the lower end of the olive and opens into the central canal of the medulla oblongata. Each lateral angle corresponds with the point of meeting of the brachia and inferior peduncle. A little below the lateral angles, on a level with the striae medullares, the ventricular cavity is prolonged outward in the form of two narrow lateral recesses, one on either side. These are situated between the inferior peduncles and the flocculi and reach as far as the detachments of the glossopharyngeal and vagus nerves. Lateral boundaries. The lower part of each lateral boundary is constituted by the clava, the fasciculus cuneatus, and the inferior peduncle, the upper part by the middle and the superior peduncle. Roof or dorsal wall. The upper portion of the roof is formed by the superior peduncle and the anterior medullary velum, the lower portion by the posterior medullary velum, the epithelial lining of the ventricle covered by the telochoroidea inferior, the tenae of the fourth ventricle, and the obex. The superior peduncle, on emerging from the central white substance of the cerebellum, pass upward and forward, forming at first the lateral boundaries of the upper part of the cavity. On approaching the inferior colliculi, they converge and their medial portions overlap the cavity and form part of its roof. The anterior medullary velum fills the angular interval between the superior peduncle and is continuous behind with the central white substance of the cerebellum. It is covered on its dorsal surface by the lingula of the superior vermis. The posterior medullary velum is continued downward and forward from the central white substance of the cerebellum in front of the nodule and tonsils and ends inferiorly in a thin, concave, somewhat ragged margin. Below this margin, the roof is devoid of nervous matter except in the immediate vicinity of the lower lateral boundaries of the ventricle, where two narrow white bands, the tineae of the fourth ventricle, ligulae, appear. These bands meet over the inferior angle of the ventricle in a thin triangular lamina, the obex. The non-nervous part of the roof is formed by the epithelial lining of the ventricle, which is prolonged downward as a thin membrane from the deep surface of the posterior medullary velum to the corresponding surface of the obex and tenae, and thence on to the floor of the ventricular cavity. It is covered and strengthened by a portion of the pia mater, which is named the telochoridea of the fourth ventricle. The tenae of the fourth ventricle tinae ventriculi corto, ligula, are two narrow bands of white matter, one on either side, which complete the lower part of the roof of the cavity. Each consists of a vertical and a horizontal part. The vertical part is continuous below the obex with the clava, to which it is inherent by a lateral border. The horizontal portion extends transversely across the inferior peduncle, below the striae medullares, and roofs in the lower and posterior part of the lateral recess. It is attached by its lower margin to the inferior peduncle and partly encloses the choroid plexus, which, however, projects beyond it like a cluster of grapes, and hence this part of the tenia has been termed the cornucopia, botchtelic. The obex is a thin triangular gray lamina which roofs in the lower angle of the ventricle and is attached by its lateral margins to the clave. The telochoridea of the fourth ventricle is in the name applied to the triangular fold of pia mater, which is carried upward between the cerebellum and the medulla oblongata. It consists of two layers, which are continuous with each other in front, and are more or less adherent throughout. The posterior layer covers the anterior inferior surface of the cerebellum, while the anterior is applied to the structures which form the lower part of the roof of the ventricle and is continued inferiorly with the pia mater on the inferior peduncles and closed part of the medulla. Choroid plexuses. These consist of two highly vascular inflections of the telochoridea 
which invaginate the lower part of the roof of the ventricle and are everywhere covered by the epithelial lining of the cavity. Each consists of a vertical and a horizontal portion. The former lies close to the middle line and the latter passes into the lateral recess and projects beyond its apex. The vertical parts of the plexuses are distinct from each other but the horizontal portions are joined in the middle line and hence the entire structure presents the form of the letter T, the vertical limb of which, however, is double. Openings in the roof. In the roof of the fourth ventricle, there are three openings, a medial and two lateral. The medial aperture, foramen majandi, is situated immediately above the inferior angle of the ventricle. The lateral apertures, foramina of Lushka, are found at the extremities of the lateral recesses. By means of these three openings, the ventricle communicates with the subarachnoid cavity, and the cerebral spinal fluid can circulate from the one to the other. Rhomboid fossa. Fossa rhomboidea, floor of the fourth ventricle. The anterior part of the fourth ventricle is named, from its shape, the rhomboid fossa, and its anterior wall, formed by the back of the pons and medulla oblongata, constitutes the floor of the fourth ventricle. It is covered by a thin layer of gray substance continuous with that of the medulla spinalis. Superficial to this, is a thin lamina of neuroglia which constitutes the appendema of the ventricle and supports a layer of ciliated epithelium. The fossa consists of three parts, superior, intermediate, and inferior. The superior part is triangular in shape and limited laterally by the superior cerebellar peduncle. Its apex, directed upward, is continuous with the cerebral aqueduct. Its base is represented by an imaginary line at the level of the upper ends of the superior foveae. The intermediate part extends from this level to that of the horizontal portions of the tinea of the ventricle. It is narrow above, where it is limited laterally by the medial peduncle, but widens below and is prolonged into the lateral recesses of the ventricle. The inferior part is triangular, and its downwardly directed apex, named the calamus scriptorius, is continuous with the central canal of the closed port of the medulla oblongata. The rhomboid fossa is divided into symmetrical halves by a median sulcus which reaches from the upper to the lower angles of the fossa and is deeper below than above. On either side of this sulcus is an elevation, the medial eminence, bounded laterally by a sulcus, the sulcus limitans. In the superior part of the fossa, the medial eminence has a width equal to that of the corresponding half of the fossa, but opposite the superior fovea, it forms an elongated swelling the colliculus facialis, which overlies the nucleus of the abducent nerve, and is, in part at least, produced by the ascending portion of the root of the facial nerve. In the inferior part of the fossa, the medial eminence assumes the form of a triangular area, the trigonum hypoglossi. When examined under water with a lens, this trigone is seen to consist of a medial and a lateral area separated by a series of oblique furrows. The medial area corresponds with the upper part of the nucleus of the hypoglossal nerve, the lateral with a small nucleus, the nucleus intercalatus. The sulcus limitans forms the lateral boundary of the medial eminence. In the superior part of the rhomboid fossa, it corresponds with the lateral limit of the fossa and presents a bluish-gray area, the locus ceruleus, which owes its color to an underlying patch of deeply pigmented nerve cells termed the substantia ferruginea. At the level of the colliculus facialis, the sulcus limitans widens into a flattened depression, the superior fovea, and in the inferior part of the fossa appears as a distinct dimple, the inferior fovea. Lateral to the fovea is a rounded elevation named the area acoustica, which extends into the lateral recess and there forms a feebly marked swelling, the tuberculum acousticum. Winding around the inferior peduncle and crossing the area acoustica, and the medial eminence are a number of white strands, the striae medullares, which form a portion of the cochlear division of the acoustic nerve and disappear into the median sulcus. Below the inferior fovea and between the trigonum hypoglossi and the lower part of the area acoustica is a triangular dark field, the alis cyneria, which corresponds to the sensory nucleus of the vagus and glossopharyngeal nerves. The lower end of the alis cyneria is crossed by a narrow translucent ridge the funiculus separans, and between this funiculus and the clava is a small tongue-shaped area, the area postrema. On section, 
it is seen that the funiculus separans is formed by a strip of thickened ependema, and the area postrema by loose, highly vascular neuroglial tissue containing nerve cells of moderate size. End of section 11.